Hi everyone and thanks for watching. I'm Tanner Kalstrom from GameTextures.com and in this tutorial I'm going to be explaining how to build this metal shader inside of Unreal Engine 4. I'm going to go over all of the texture files required, how to properly use our mask file, and then set up a robust and easy to customize material which will hopefully teach you the techniques that you need to know to use any metallic material inside of Unreal Engine 4. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, we're going to power through it. It's probably going to take like 10 minutes. So sit back and I hope you learn something. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments, but I'm just going to get started now. Alright, so in Unreal Engine 4, I've already imported all of my materials. So you can see that uh, I have my normal map, my specular map, my mask map, my height map, my gloss map, my ambient occlusion map, and my base color image. All of these are going to be very important for what we're doing, but uh, the one that we need to pay the most attention to for Unreal Engine 4 is our mask file. The mask file is, is kind of key to everything that we're doing. You can see that it's just this funky material that has a red, green, and blue channel. And each of these channels represents a different material in our actual texture. So the red represents this rusty, dirty base plate. The green represents our slightly polished, shiny steel. And the blue represents our rust and dirt. We're going to be using this to set up our metalness material and our roughness material and also change the color on our base color material to be more physically correct for Unreal Engine 4. So let's just, let's just get started. First thing we do is create a new material. I'm going to call it Metal Tutorial. And I'm going to grab our base color our gloss map, our ambient occlusion map, our normal map, and our specular map. And throw them into here and just drag and drop them. So now that they're in here we're just gonna set up a really quick material to show what this would look like if we didn't do anything special with our texture. And just just plugged it in with what it looks like in the box which is probably fine for some of our materials but with metallic materials we really need to pay attention to some of these other settings. So I'm going to take our base color, our beta map, and plug it into our base color slot. I'm going to take our gloss map, plug it into our roughness slot. Our specular map, plug it into specular. Let's just rearrange these. I'm going to take our normal map. Oops. Take our normal map, drag it up here plug it into our normal map file. I guess I didn't need to drag it. Whatever. And our ambient occlusion map and drag it into our ambient occlusion slot. Cool. So let's just compile this real quick and take a look at what it looks like on our actual on our actual scene here. Let's apply it to the sphere just by dragging and dropping it. Come on. Did I not do something here? I don't understand. Oh, there we go. I guess I just had to get frustrated with it. So you can see that our material already looks pretty awesome in Unreal Engine. There's some things that I, I'm not really liking though. The first one is that this plate material is very glossy. It's almost like it's wet or something and that's not right. Rust and dirt on top of a metal doesn't usually look this shiny. It looks rougher and same is going on. The same thing is happening with our rust texture too. And our, our metal looks kind of strange too. I mean just throwing it out there. It looks passable but we could make it look better and it only looks weird because of how our base color is built. So I'm going to start on that. So let's go back into our metal material. And let's take a look at our albedo map. Okay, so our all of our albedo maps are built to work with a different rendering style, which is really common in and engines like Marmoset, CryEngine, and Unity all use it. And Unreal Engine 4 just does a little bit differently. So the first thing we need to do is understand how Unreal is different. So base color in Unreal Engine 4 is closer to how other engines use specularity, and as a result, metallic materials, which are generally pretty dark colored, 
on the base color image in CryEngine, Unity, and Marmoset need to be the opposite in Unreal Engine 4. So, we're going to set up a quick little node network which will allow us to grab the metallic values in our base color and swap them for Unreal Engine 4 physically correct colors. So to start, first thing we're going to do is hold down LERP, or L, I'm sorry, and create a LERP node. I'm going to plug our A, our base color into the A slot. Then we're going to hold down 3 and create a constant 3 material. This is just, this is just pretty much a color. This, this will allow us to assign a color to the B slot. And we're going to find our mask texture, which we haven't imported yet, I guess. Whoops. Grab our mask texture and throw it into our editor. So remember, I, I already talked about the mask file a little bit, but let's open it up again and talk real quick about what it's doing. So we have this green slot here, which I'm going to use as our steel texture, which is kind of this shiny framing on our plate. So what we need to do is take that mask and or that, that channel of our mask map and apply it to the alpha of the lerp that we created. So what this is going to do is it's going to make us or allow us to control the color of everything that is rendered in the green mask channel and then overlay it on top of our base image that we have earlier. So let's just plug it in real quick and I can show you what it what it looks like immediately. All right. So you can see right away that it made our it made our steel look very dark, almost like it's gun steel, you know, like a black metal, which isn't really what we want, and it doesn't it doesn't look great. So we're gonna change this color to be a physically correct steel color, which the steel oh what's going on? The steel color I like is around 0.48. We're gonna change it to that in the values. and hit apply. So what just happened there? Things got a little funky in our material. Now instead of looking like metal it just looks like somebody painted that section of the material white. And that's happening because we haven't actually told Unreal Engine to render that as metal. To do that we're gonna take that same green channel that we used to isolate that color, that, that white color, and plug it into the metallic input of, um, of our, our material. And hit apply. So you can, you can see right away that that made a big change. Everything now looks kind of more like a chrome, or actually it looks more like a steel. It looks, it looks really good. I mean, it's kind of, kind of the direction we want to go, but still we have this very shiny plate material here, which we don't like. It looks crappy so to speak. So the next thing I'm going to do is set up a lerp network which will allow us to control the roughness of all three of our masked channels here. So we can control the roughness of our plate material, the roughness of our rust material, and the roughness of our steel material all independently instead of depending on our gloss map to control them all. So let me just remove our gloss map from our roughness here and I'm going to move it out of the material a little bit. And I'm, gonna, I'm actually just going to do some really quick organization here so that this is a little bit easier to look at. So I'm going to select all of those, hit C to create a comment field. We're going to call it this area base color. Grab our mask and pull it away. Select our specular call it specular, or normal, call it normal map, and our ambient occlusion map, and call it AO. Okay, so the first thing that we need to understand here is that we're going to be building a node tree out of lerp nodes and constant nodes, similar to how we recolored our base color above, but this time we're going to be using all three different values. So I'm going to hold L and create a lerp node, 3, a constant, and 
then I'm gonna select both of those and copy paste them twice. Reorganize a little bit. Keeping clean is very important in here because some of these materials can get very out of control very fast if you're not if you're not keeping them clean. Let's cave, and I've moved all of our normal maps and ambient occlusion maps away from now from our from our work area for now. So the first thing we want to do to start controlling our roughness tree is we're going to take the constant, the first constant that we made, which is going to control the value of our rust material, or I'm sorry, of our plate material, and plug it into the B input of our first node. I'm going to take the red channel of our mask, which is the rust, which is the plate, the rusted plate area, and plug it into the alpha channel of our, of our lobe node. Okay, so now black is controlling that. I'm going to take that lerp node, plug it into the A slot of our second lerp node, grab our second constant 3, put it into the B section of the B slot, grab our green channel, and use it as the alpha. And one more time, I'm going to grab this lerp channel, plug it into the A slot of this third lerp channel, grab our third constant 3, plug it into the B channel, and I'm going to take the blue section of our mask file, which controls our rust and dirt, and plug it into the alpha. And then I'm going to take the last lerp node and plug it into our roughness spot in our material. Cool. So now we have a different value controlling each one of our materials. This is kind of a, a cool way to handle everything. So it's going to give us a lot of control of our material once we start finishing it up. So I'm going to start on the plate material. Since the plate is kind of rough, it's still metal. I don't want it I don't want it to be as shiny as it is, but I don't want it to be super dull either. So I'm going to put it to a nice like 0.55 value. Just going to make it sort of reflective. It'll make it look good. And then I'm going to grab our second constant 3 which remember is plugged into the green channel which is our steel and I'm gonna put it to about 0.3 because I want I want our steel to re to be s pretty shiny still but not as shiny as it is now and I'm gonna grab our last constant which controls our rust and I'm gonna put this pretty pretty high I'm gonna put it to like 0.9 so our rust is not gonna be very shiny because it's a very rough surface and I'm going to hit compile and you can see that once it finishes you can now see that our plate texture is not super shiny as it was before it still has a little bit which is what we want so it's still a metal and it's still it still should react to light a little bit but it's not as shiny as it was and same with the rust the rust is not shiny at all wow so yeah I'm going to select all of these again and create a new roughness layer, roughness comment. Bring my sled over there here. A lot of people are curious what, how uh, metallic metalness and gloss, or metalness and specular work together in Unreal Engine. And the answer is pretty simple. Anything that is not plugged into the metalness shader, it will use the specular map to render. And anything that is plugged into the specular and not the rust will do the opposite. So that's pretty much that's pretty much the basics of setting up one of our metal materials in Unreal Engine. Pretty pretty straightforward. Definitely nothing too fancy about it. But the results can be pretty pretty outstanding and they look as good in Unreal Engine 4 as they do in any of the other high-end rendering packages.